Today, I want to talk about one of the most dangerous substances on our planet. Okay, so perhaps probably not in the same category as botulinum toxin or ricin, but I would bet your bottom dollar it's probably caused more human deaths. That's right, we're talking about sugar. While it has revolutionized the taste of food, unfortunately, sugar is not as sweet to our health as it is to our taste buds. Of course, unless you still believe in Santa Claus, I'm sure you still know this about sugar, but what I really wanted to focus on today in this video is what sugar does to our gut and all the little bacteria that live there. And hang out to the very end if you want to learn more about what are the best alternatives for sugar and if there is such a thing as having too much fruit. Now, there's really nothing beneficial about sugar. Obviously, besides the fact that you're giving your taste buds a party, but most of us eat way more of it than we should. The American Heart Association recommends no more than six teaspoons of added sugar per day for women and nine per day for men. But how much do you think the average American, Australian, and many Europeans consume per day? Yep, it's a bit scary. Anywhere between 18 and 25 teaspoons per day. That's about four times as much as the recommended amount. And that's even being generous. Now, I'm not talking about sugars naturally found in fruits and vegetables. I'm talking about added sugars, the white collar criminals of nutrition, mainly plain old white sugar and its sly complex, high fructose corn syrup. You don't have to search hard to find added sugars. You could pretty much walk into any supermarket and pull the closest packaged food off the shelf and you'll find them. Added sugars are in most processed foods, including products that companies advertise as healthy, such as cereals, granola bars, crackers, and juices. And if you think you've found a product that doesn't contain added sugar, have you checked for all the 61 different names for sugar, from cane juice to anhydrous dextrose? Sugar, of course, does taste good, and that's why we have a problem on our hands. There's no issue enjoying naturally occurring fructose in whole fresh fruit. The problem is eating sugar as an isolated food. Now, eating a cookie or a piece of cake can seem like a harmless indulgence, but it's really just spooning disguised sugar straight into your mouth. Within minutes, your bloodstream is flooded with sugar, then the proteins in your tissues, the elastic fiber of your skin, the hemoglobin in your blood, the inner lining of your blood vessels, even the lenses of your eyes start getting sticky. Kind of like when you spill honey, it goes everywhere in your bag. On top of that, in the 98.6 Fahrenheit metabolic oven of your body, the sugars and proteins melt together and oxidize. Technically, it's called advanced glycation end products or ages. These damaged and congealed proteins actually cause us to age. They cause protein fibers to break, muscle fibers to weaken, skin to crack, eyes to become less permeable to light, and even brain function to decline. All very real signs of getting older. So Matt tells me anyway. Consuming excessive sugar is also going to skyrocket your risk for obesity and heart disease and type 2 diabetes and even certain types of cancer. Researchers have even called sugar a weapon of mass destruction as it causes excessive amounts of fat buildup in the liver, also known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, scientists have known that for some time that sugar can throw out metabolism and insulin responses out of whack, which can lead to all types of diseases. What they didn't know until somewhat recently, however, is that is how sugar affects the hordes of bacteria doing their thing in our gut. One study involved mice who were fed high fructose and high glucose diets. The researchers found that both groups of mice experienced humongous changes in their gut microbiomes. The microbiomes also shifted towards a more, more pro-obesity bacteria, less of the bacteria to prevent inflammation and weight gain. This has led to an increase in inflammation and then to increased gut permeability, AKA leaky gut. And leaky gut, well, that contributes to a plethora of diseases, even diseases of the brain. But that is a big topic and it's a fascinating one. So if you want to learn more about that, click on the link here. 
Studies in humans have shown similar results. Researchers have found that obese teenagers with higher fructose intake actually don't have all the key microbes that they should have within their gut. Without these beneficial bacteria, which are essential for healthy carbohydrate metabolism, people are more likely to pile on those unwanted pounds, as well as increase their risk of diabetes-like issues. So high sugar intake increases the number of bad bacteria and decreases the number of good bacteria. It disrupts the entire balance of the microbiome, increases the permeability of the intestine and causes the infiltration of unwanted bacterial toxins into the body. Now, if you think that you are exempt from this because your sugar intake is pretty low, maybe you only have it on the weekends, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. But a study done by the University of Alberta showed that just two days of a high sugar diet could alter the microbiome, increase the risk of inflammatory bowel disease and have a significant impact on our health. The best thing that you can do is to avoid sugar altogether. And Again, I'm not talking about fruit. The next best thing is to significantly reduce the amount that you're putting into your mouth. That includes cakes, candies, chocolates, desserts, juices, sauces, biscuits, chips, even. Packaged foods in general, check the ingredients list before you purchase. But don't worry, there are plenty of great alternatives to sugar. What about high fructose corn syrup or brown rice syrup? ba -ba definitely stay away. High fructose corn syrup is one of the worst for your health. Most of the corn used is genetically modified and is completely void of nutrients. It's also linked to numerous diseases such as increased risk of metabolic syndrome, obesity, liver disease, and insulin resistance leading to type 2 diabetes and cancers. And brown rice syrup is essentially just pure glucose and has a very high glycemic index of 98, higher than even table sugar. It's also prone to arsenic contamination. Agave nectar is another sugar substitute which is often applauded as a natural sweet alternative. However, although it does come from a plant, the manufacturing process pretty much destroys any potential nutrients and health benefits. And while agave has a low GI score, it can contain up to 90% fructose, which as we've already seen, can lead to weight gain and elevated triglyceride levels. And then you've got the no calorie or artificial sweeteners such as saccharin, asulfame, neotame, sucralose, and of course we cannot forget aspartame. These are obviously synthetic. Some popular brands you may have heard about are Splenda, NutraSweet, Sweet and Low. Now, although they're sugar-free and are considered suitable for people with diabetes, they are not good for your heart. And there's plenty of evidence to support that. In fact, in a 2014 study which tracked 60,000 women over a 10 year period, they found that women who drank two or more diet drinks per day had a 30% higher risk of a cardiovascular disease event. And if you want to know a secret, well, it's not really a secret since there are published studies about it, but the research tells us that people who drink diet sodas are actually also more likely to gain weight. What? I know, but researchers believe that it's because these non-calorie sweeteners and diet sodas trick the brain into expecting a sugar hit, but when it doesn't come, the brain is stimulated to crave food, which leads to overeating and gaining the kilos after all. So in reality, diet sodas and weight loss, they just don't go together. And then there's sweeteners such as brown sugar, coconut sugar, maple syrup, and honey, which, okay, contain some good compounds such as antioxidants and some fiber and vitamins, but at the end of the day, these are still high in sugar. For example, maple syrup is made up of two thirds sucrose and supplies 50 grams of sugar in just a quarter of a cup. And coconut sugar consists of around 70 to 80% sucrose. And the nutrients that these sweeteners contain aren't enough to write home about anyway. So what are good options? For me, I'd put my vote on stevia. And I know this one is a little controversial and I'll explain why in a second. But stevia is 100% naturally sourced and contains no calories. Studies suggest it may prevent metabolic syndrome and other related conditions and lower blood pressure, maybe even too much in some cases. The controversy with stevia is to do with its effect on the gut. Some people 
Even some studies say that it may create a minor change in the microbiome. However, looking and comparing at all the studies that have been done on stevia and the gut, overall, it seems to indicate that it actually may have a beneficial effect on the diversity of your gut microbiome. It may mimic probiotic action. So, so far, I think it's one of the best options and hopefully more research is done in this area. And then you also have sugar alcohols like erythritol and xylitol. And they sound like they've been conjured in a lab, but they actually are natural. And despite the name, they don't contain alcohol either. They are low GI and contain no calories. And besides being a no calorie sweetener, xylitol can prevent tooth decay, reduce infections, and may even help prevent osteoporosis. However, as a polyol, for those with IBS or SIBO, especially the the type of person who has to rush to the toilet, it can lead to more problems as it can pull water into your intestines. But if it isn't an issue for you, then xylitol could be a great option. But beware, keep your doggy away. Xylitol is toxic to dogs and may even have life threatening consequences. Keep any gum, candy, or even toothpaste that contains xylitol out of the reach of your pooch. Erythritol occurs naturally in many fruits and as well as mushrooms and foods derived from fermentation. It can also be human made. The good thing about erythritol is that it doesn't seem to cause the same digestive issues as xylitol and may be a preferred option for people with diabetes. It's also not as sweet as sugar, so sometimes it's added to artificial sugars. So just be careful of that. And just be sure to look for non-GMO for both xylitol and erythritol. Then you've got monk fruit, which is also one of the more natural sweeteners and has been used for longer than your grandparents have been alive. It's around 150 to 200 times sweeter than table sugar, but contains zero calories. It doesn't affect your blood sugar and even acts as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. It's also very safe. Your grandpa, your baby, your neighbor, your pet rat even. Unfortunately, it's one of the more expensive sugar alternatives to buy and you need to watch for products where other compounds such as dextrose has been added. And then there's date sugar, which is a whole food sweetener and it's made by simply grinding whole dates down into a powder. This makes it highly nutritious. It's high in fiber, protein, B vitamins, and certain minerals. You could also just use whole dates without grinding a powder or even making a paste. The problem is date sugar doesn't melt well, so it does limit where you can use it. The price can also be daunting. And that brings us to the best sugar alternative on the market. Civilizations have been using this sweetener for thousands of years, and there's so much scientific evidence supporting its health promoting benefits. It's also not very expensive. Yes, I'm talking about blueberries, raspberries, bananas, oranges, and in other words, whole fruit. These win hands down. They're full of gut friendly fiber to slow down the release of sugar into your bloodstream. And they're full of antioxidants, polyphenols, and other amazing nutrients. You can eat them whole, mash them or puree them. Versatile. Just try to buy them organic and voila, you've got fuss free, ready to go, delicious dessert. But isn't fructose, which comes from fruit, bad for us? The simple answer is no. The harmful effects of sugar are just limited to industrial fructose, meaning table sugar and high fructose corn syrup, with no evidence of a negative effect of fructose when consumed as a whole fruit. And there's a lot of evidence supporting fruit's health promoting benefits. And what's more, the research even shows that you can't really have too much fruit. According to Harvard, quote, the nutritional problems of fructose and sugar come when they are added to foods. Fruit, on the other hand, is beneficial in almost any amount, end quote. Well, I hope you've learned something from this video. I'm very passionate about this topic because of the damage sugar is doing to us. And unfortunately, marketing and well money is drowning out to a large extent the voice of healthy eating. It would do your health a lot of good if you were to cut out sugar. So please share in the comments what you are going to change to cut sugar out of your diet or reduce it. And while you're at it, we would really appreciate if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.
it helps us more than you know getting this sort of information out. It's been a huge pleasure spending this time with you. I'll see you in the next video. Now, I already mentioned the video about leaky gut, so here's a reminder how to head over and watch that. And if you want to learn about the role leaky gut plays in autoimmune disease, then you may want to watch this clip as well.